Quick one today, you might be like me and have a new quad with the FR Sky XM Plus receiver in it and you want some RSSI going to the flight control. Well, today we're gonna flash the receiver with new firmware and see if we can get that working. So I've got the X215 Pro here. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and unplugged the receiver from the back of the flight control. This is the Kakute F4. And I think we can come up with a way to flash this without disassembling the quad and we can get the RSSI working in the firmware. Let's give it a try. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna take a servo connector which is going to plug into our Tyrannus and then we'll just make some pins on the end of it that we can plug into the end of that uh, pigtail coming off the receiver. I don't think I have anything small enough to go in. So what I'm going to do is just use some uh, ends off of some diodes and just solder them onto the ends of here. And we should be able to just touch it on the end and hopefully we'll be able to flash the firmware. So we'll just tin the ends of the wires here and then we'll go ahead and take our little leads, our little trimmed bits, and then we'll just tack them on. And with any luck, we should be able to get them to join up. Now we have three little leads that we can just sort of hold on the end of that wire. So it looks like we have a little bit of a mismatch because on the transmitter I know I need to go uh, black, red, white, which is ground, power, then signal. And we have them inverted here so we're going to need to twist them and what i think i'll do is i'm just going to hot glue these yeah i think that'll work i think just to avoid some shorts i'm going to go ahead and use some heat shrink tubing on here and that way we can have these wires close together and we won't have anything short together i think it'll be handy for a long-term use of this pigtail All right, so we'll take it and plug our pigtail in, and then we're gonna go ahead and bring this up to it, and hopefully we can get it to flash. Now to download the firmware, I just did a simple Google search for the, the FlySky XM Plus and the RSSI. From there, just click the link to the FRSky website and you'll be able to download the firmware. It'll come down as a package with all of the ones that you could need. Once you get that downloaded, go ahead and copy it over to the SD card under the firmware folder. After that, you're all set and we can carry on. So the connections we use were in the order of red, brown, orange in this case. So that's red, ground and signal and we're going to hook them up we're just going to press them against the pins on the side here and this is not the best but it, it will work so red black white red brown orange in this case and across the bottom of the transmitter pretty straightforward ground red signal so I went to the website for the FR Sky receivers and I downloaded the firmware for the XM Plus and I went ahead and I put it on the SD card in my X7 here. And to get there, we're just gonna hit the center button and we're gonna hit page. We're gonna go down to firmware and sure enough, it shows up. It's the XM Plus. I'm gonna select it. And in my case, I want just RSSI, the top one. I don't want the EU versions, I'm in North America. And we're just gonna do a long hold, and that's what we're gonna hit, flash external device. We're gonna go ahead and hook these connections up, hold them against each other, and with any luck, we should have a new firmware on our receiver. We'll go ahead and we'll plug our receiver back into our flight control board at the back here on our X215 Pro and then we'll test it out. Now we go into beta flight, we'll assign our RSSI to our channel 16 in my case and we should be good to go on the OSD. 
Inside of Betaflight on the receiver tab, you can see here that my aux channel is now showing an RSSI. So all you have to do is go ahead and pick that aux channel up on the top right and you're all set. Now Betaflight can work with it. In the CLI, you can also do set RSSI and you can manually set it or just verify your settings there. In the OSD menu, you're going to want to make sure that you turn the RSSI on and position it on the menu wherever you like it to be. I like mine up on the top left, it makes it nice and visible. Now if your receiver tab doesn't have all those channels showing, well you can go into the CLI and type set aux. If you're only a few channels in there, well, it'll allow you to, it'll show you the allowed range. Go ahead and set aux equals to the number that you desire. Then make sure that you type save afterwards and the CLI will exit and your settings will be saved. Go ahead and power it up and we're going to have RSSI available on the channel. Now in my goggles, I have the on-screen display showing me a live RSSI value at all times. And you can have alarms on this so it'll blink at whatever level you desire. You set that in the OSD menu in Betaflight or Butterflight, whatever you're using. It works fantastic. Gives you another level of protection, have an idea where you're at, how far you are away, and whether you're safe to keep flying. If you like this video, click a thumbs up down below. Really appreciate the support, guys. Good luck in all your flying.